In this lesson, we're going to talk about the various types of printers that you can use with your PC system. Now, as you probably know, the role of a printer is to accept text and graphic output from a PC system and transfer that onto a piece of paper. Now, the printers that you can buy vary greatly in size, in speed, in sophistication, in cost. Basically, the general rule of thumb is the more expensive the printer, probably the better the output's going to be. That doesn't hold true always, but for the most part, that seems to be the case. When you select a printer, you need to take these four different factors into consideration and pick one that fits what it is you need to do. Size, are you dealing with a large a work area or a very small one? Are you dealing with speed? In other words, do you have a lot of users who need to put out a lot of documents really fast, or do you just have one or two people that need to print every now and then? Sophistication. Do you need really, really high quality output, or is just you know text on the page pretty much all you're going to be doing? And cost. What can you afford? Put all these factors together, take a look at your organization you're supporting, and decide what it is you need. Now, with that in mind, let's talk about the various different types of printers you can choose from. The first and oldest type is called a dot matrix printer. There are four critical components in a dot matrix printer. The first is the print head. The print head is relatively small in a dot matrix printer, but if we were to look at it close up, we would see that it looks something like this. Kind of a square block, and it's got a series of pins. In addition to the print head, we also have a component called the platen. If you've ever used a typewriter, then you probably already know what a platen is. It's that black roller within the typewriter that you put paper through and roll it around. Okay? It's a circular component, like a big cylinder, and it's black in color. And its job is to kind of hold the paper in place and serve as a backing to which this print head can hit. In addition to the platen, we also have a ribbon, and then we also have a component called the tractor feed. The ribbon contains the ink that we're going to transfer onto the paper, and the tractor feed is used to draw paper, continuous feed paper, up through the printer. How does this all work? Well, the tractor feed pulls a piece of paper rolls it around the platen. If you were to look at it end on, the, the platen would be here, the print head would be here, and the piece of paper would be rolled up around it like that. Now to print, remember that this print head has a series of pins and the number of pins can vary. A very inexpensive dot matrix printer will only have nine pins as you see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A more expensive, higher quality dot matrix printer might have upwards of 24 different pins. Each of these pins is actually retracted inside the print head. We're going to do an exploded view here of the print head turned 90 degrees from where we're looking at it now. So we've got our piece of paper here. We've got our platen right here. Inside this print head, each of these pins look like this. And they've got a spring right here that keeps them pulled inside of the print head. Back here, they have an electrical solenoid. To print, the printer sends electrical current to a pattern of these pins. When the solenoid receives that current, it fires the pin out like this. It smacks the paper. There's actually the ribbon it sits right here like this. I should have put that in earlier. The pins fire out of the print head. They smack the ribbon up against the paper and leave an imprint on the paper. By using a different variety of patterns, we can create different letters. For instance, with this nine head pin, if we wanted to make a letter A, we would fire this pin, this pin, this pin, this pin, this pin, and this pin. There's our letter A. As you can probably see, 
that using only nine pins, the letters really aren't that great a quality. The more pins you have in the print head, the better the quality looks. A lot of the nine pin dot matrix printers compensate and provide an option wherein it makes two passes for each line of text. And by doing that, it can actually create somewhat better, you know, more regular looking letters. By going through and creating each letter in the line twice, it can actually use two different patterns in the pins. By doing that, we can overlay one over the other and actually get a character that looks relatively good. Obviously, though, if you're having to print each line twice, it takes twice as long to print. Now, dot matrix printers have been with us for quite some time, and they continue to remain. One of the key reasons is the fact that dot matrix printers can do one thing that most other printers just can't do. That is, they can print in duplicate or triplicate using forms. Most other printer types don't use impact. With a dot matrix printer, though, we actually have physical impact. That means you can put carbon copies through the dot matrix printer and have them print out. For that reason, you still see them used for a variety of different purposes, say for rental contracts, for receipts, and other things where we want to be able to print copies in duplicate or triplicate. Now, the next type of printer we want to talk about is called an ink dispersion or ink jet printer. In the last 10 years, ink jet printers have become very, very popular. They create really high quality output and they don't cost a whole lot. Let's take a look at how an ink dispersion printer works. Just like with a dot matrix printer, we have our platen and we use a form feeder to pull a piece of paper through, and wrap it around the platen, and insert it between the platen and the print head. Unlike a dot matrix printer, which uses continuous feed paper, an ink dispersion printer actually uses just cut sheets of paper, just like you would use for a copy machine. The print head in an ink dispersion printer, in some ways, is similar to a dot matrix printer. If we were to rotate this print head and look at it the way it would look to the piece of paper, you'd see it's composed of a series of dots. Just like dot matrix printer. However, instead of having pins inside that come out and strike a ribbon, instead we have a whole bunch of ink here inside of our ink reservoir. This is where inkjet printers diverge from a dot matrix printer. It's actually kind of cool. What happens is, is that current is applied to a specific pattern of nozzles. Say we want to fire this nozzle, this nozzle, this nozzle, this nozzle, this one, and this one. To do that, current is applied to each of these nozzles. When that happens, the ink that's inside of this nozzle actually boils. It creates an air bubble. When that happens, it actually shoots a jet of ink and makes a dot on the piece of paper. By varying the current and applying it to different nozzles in the print head, we're able to create different patterns on the paper. Back in the early 1990s, if you had a printer at home, it was probably a dot matrix printer. But starting in about 1994, the ink dispersion or inkjet printer became the default standard. And for the last 10 years, most home printers are inkjet printers. They work really good and they create really good quality output. They have one weakness, however. That is the fact that most of the electronic circuitry that makes up the printer is not actually in the printer itself. Now, if you have an inkjet printer, you know that you can go down to the computer store and purchase an inkjet printer for a very low price. 50, 40, sometimes I've seen them as low as $39. You're thinking, woohoo, cheap printer. You get it home, you use it, and you use up the ink that's in the ink reservoir, so you have to get a new ink cartridge, right? And how much does it cost? Probably as much, if not more, than the printer itself. That's because most of the electronic circuitry that makes up the inkjet printer is actually in the print head. So when you have to change the ink reservoir, you have to basically buy new componentry that make up the inkjet printer. And that's why the cartridges are so expensive. With that in mind, let's talk about the next type of printer, and that is the solid ink printer. Now, solid ink is just starting to come into four. In the past, this has been reserved for higher-end applications. 
the average small business or home user didn't know anything about nor need a solid ink printer. However, prices on solid ink printers have been coming down considerably in the last five years to the point where they're becoming reasonable for small businesses and home users to purchase. Now, a solid ink printer creates smaller, more uniform dots than a dot matrix or inkjet printer. And instead of using a ribbon or liquid ink, a solid ink printer uses solid sticks of ink that are inserted inside the printer. Let's take a look at how the process works. Now, the process for printing in a solid ink printer is a little bit different than a dot matrix or inkjet printer. In fact, it's kind of a hybrid between an inkjet printer and a laser printer. In a solid ink printer, our solid ink sticks, there's more of them than just two, there's not just red and blue, are melted within the print head and are actually jetted onto a drum. As the ink is jetted onto the drum, it actually rotates. It contains one full page. So if you were to look at the drum, after the ink has been melted, the top of the page might start here and go around, and the bottom of the page would be right here. After the ink has been melted onto the drum, a piece of paper is then drawn from a paper tray and is rotated around the drum, drawn across the drum, and as it does so, the melted ink from the drum is transferred onto the piece of paper. The ink then cools and adheres itself to the paper. Solid ink printers work really, really well. In fact, they create some of the highest quality output you can get outside of a regular printing press. Now, the next type of printer we want to talk about are thermal printers. Now, thermal printers have been with us for quite some time. It's an older technology. In fact, many of the older fax machines and many of the lower end fax machines that you buy today still use thermal technology. Instead of using ribbon or ink or melted ink sticks, we use special paper that reacts to heat. We can use then heat to transfer an image from the printer onto this special paper. Now, because of the fact that thermal printers use special paper, they're, well, other than in fax machines, we don't use them very often in newer PC printers because it, the paper is expensive. And it also is a little bit different. If you ever had a piece of paper that's come out of a thermal printing fax machine, you know that it doesn't really feel like regular paper. It's kind of flimsy and light, and it's got a glossy feel to it. The next type of printer we want to talk about is a dye sublimation printer. Now, just like a solid ink printer, dye sublimation printers have actually been around for a while. However, they've really been priced out of the range of the average small business or home user. That's changed in the last five years. The prices have come down to the point where they're feasible to implement for a small business or home user. Now, a dye sublimation printer allows you to print photo lab quality pictures. As the price of these printers go down and the more digital cameras you see on the market, the more and more home users as well as small businesses you're going to see buying this type of technology. The key benefit is the fact that they provide a smooth blending of colors. Now that's something that's hard to achieve with other types of printers. A dye sublimation printer does this really, really well, and that's why we can get such high quality photographs using this type of technology. And in addition, it's also less vulnerable to fading and distortion over time. If you've ever printed anything off of a color inkjet printer, for example, put it in a file, and then came back and looked at it a year later, you know that the inks fade, and they also tend to bleed just a little bit. In dye sublimation printing, the colors are not laid down as individual dots, as you do with an inkjet, with a solid ink, or dot matrix printer. Instead, inside of a dye sublimation printer, if you were to look inside, you'd see there's a long roll of semi-transparent film. And that film is made up of individual sheets stuck end to end of red, blue, yellow, and gray film. Now embedded in this film are solid dyes corresponding to the four basic colors used in high-end printing, meaning cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Now if you've ever taken something to a professional printer to be printed, 
and you printed it using standard laser jet or inkjet technology or even created the file using red, green, and blue technology, you know, they'll say, ah, we can't do this. We need the electronic file formatted using these four colors instead of red, green, and blue. So how does a dye sublimation printer work then? Well, the way it works is that we have a print head, like we do with other types of printers. Then we have our transparent film. We're looking at this end on now. And then we have our piece of paper. What happens is that the print head heats up and it passes over the transparent film that we've talked about. As that happens, the dyes that are within this film vaporize and are transferred to the paper and they actually permeate the glossy surface of the paper and as they cool, they return back to their solid form. In, in this way, we can transfer a very high quality image to that piece of paper. The nice thing about dye sublimation printers is the fact that they create a gentle gradation. Instead of having distinct dots of particular colors, it creates a gentle gradation between colors. And this makes it so that the photograph looks like a regular photograph. It looks like it's supposed to be a real picture. In this lesson, we talked about five different printing technologies. We talked about dot matrix. We talked about ink dispersion. We talked about thermal. We talked about solid ink and we talked about dye sublimation. There's one other type of printing technology that you need to be familiar with. It's widely implemented and it's very popular. That's the laser printer.